Welcome back to episode six of the Photomator Masterclass, where today we're gonna to take a little break from the color adjustments panel, and we're gonna take a little tour of the nice handy tools you have available to you at the top level. And these tools are especially useful for fine tuning your image or if you're taking portraits, which are both super common. So let's jump right into those. There's no project files to download today. Grab your popcorn, sit back, and let's jump into the edit. The photos we're gonna be working on today were given by a friend, so I'm gonna to link to his Instagram down below. Go check him out. But they're great examples of a studio photo session, and we're going to use these as an example to show you how to use some of these top tools up here that are available to you. So I'm just gonna take these in order from left to right because typically that's how I would probably use them. The first is this ML Enhance, which when you click it, uses machine learning to automatically try to figure out the best edit for the photo. So if I take a look at the edits that it's made, you can see there's a little bit of adjustment in the tint, brightness, black point, and even a few selective edits that have been applied down here as well. It's a good starting place for editing a photo if you're not sure exactly where to start. The next tool is the repair tool, and it is genuinely intended just for cleaning up little blemishes. So if I dial up the brush size a little bit, I can just click right there and we're good. Now to be clear, this isn't about trying to make your model look perfect. This is about removing things that are distracting. And so, for example, a small blemish on the chin, a little scar on the forehead, really easy and quick to clean up. And in general, it makes it easier to focus on the subject of the photo and not get distracted. Now, if for some reason the repair tool isn't doing exactly what you want it to do, there is this additional clone tool. And it's kind of an interesting tool because you can make it small and you can make it very soft. And if you paint along, it follows along with your cursor. So you can see that little X is following along as I'm painting, which is helping me paint out that hair. Now, again, I don't personally use this tool very often because it can be hard to get a result that actually looks seamless. Like for example, I think it's still pretty clear right here. Maybe it's a little better down here. So it's not usually my go-to. With that said, tons of people make great use of it all the time to eliminate like footsteps in the sand or rocks in the sand. It's really good for areas that are big and broad and full of texture. The only thing that I really wanna point out here is that the clone tool and the repair tool use the same reset button. So if you don't like what you've done, you can hit that to reset them. Undo and redo if you'd like as well. And then also you have some options to control the crosshair position as you're using the clone tool. I basically never use those. <laughs> so I'm gonna recommend you don't either. Okay, the next tool that's available to you is the crop tool. And most images that I take, I end up using the crop tool. And it's nice because it shows you all sorts of different alignments. But the really cool thing is that you can also use it to straighten a photo. So if I go like that, I can get it so that the straight line is going right down the middle of her nose, which looks like it was only off very slightly. But you also have this auto straighten tool. If you just click it, it attempts to figure out what it wants the right straighten to be. I'm gonna stick with mine. You also have some cool options here to rotate your image really quickly or flip it. Because a lot of times the mood is actually different back and forth or you know, maybe you imported it from another image and it came in upside down. The other is that you can change the perspective so that if you have, for example, a building and you're trying to get the outside lines of a building to line up, you can shift this back and forth, which is really nice. So let me give you this really common example. With the perspective tool, you can actually make it so that the architectural lines are going straight up and down and so maybe what I'll do is I'll just go based on this pillar right here, because I think that feels actually most natural. And then I've got this line right here. I can see that my horizon line is lined up correctly. This is what it originally was. Looks much nicer, much more professional when I've got those perspective lines straightened out. All right, and that's it for your tour of the editing tools you have available to you at this top level. Okay, that's it for episode six. Hopefully you found that tour of these tools helpful. If you did, you might wanna support me here on YouTube or on Patreon because that will get you early access to all of my videos, including future Masterclass episodes as they come out. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.